Hey everyone, it's your girl Deanne and I am back tonight with another video. As you can tell by the title, um, tonight I am going to talk about my first time experience with online dating. So everything I'm saying in this video is true events. This really did happen. Girl Scouts honor. So I just hope that somebody can learn from my mistake of what not to do. So let me get right into the story. Um, so in 2008, I decided to pack up all of my things and move to Georgia. Now, at the time, I was in a really bad relationship, and I basically made a decision that the only way I was going to leave this guy was to move to another state. So I wrote him a Dear John letter, and I took a first-class flight to Atlanta, Georgia. Um... Now, going there, I had no plan. Like, literally, I didn't know anybody. I was just determined to meet a nice guy, get married, and just kind of like, screw you, look where I'm at now, kind of thing, right? But that is not what happened. So, the moment I stepped out of the plane, again, I didn't have a clue of where I was going to live, where I was going. I never forget this. Um, there was a cab driver. I hopped in his cab and he asked me, where did you want to go? And I did one of those coming to America moments. Remember when Simi and Hakeem, when they went into the cab and they were like, take us to a certain part of the area. I did that. I told the cab driver to take me somewhere where I can walk to get something to eat. There's like a nearby um, grocery store. You know, just a place where I can like commute to and from on foot. So this cab driver took me to College Park off of Old National Highway. And if you live in Atlanta, you know that is not a good area. But I had no idea. I thought this was a good area, right? So I never forget this. When I got off the cab, there was a Motel 6. So I had uh, four pieces of luggage. And this is like a true story. Like, again, Girl Scouts honor. I get out the cab. I go into uh, Motel 6. And I basically pay for a week because I didn't know how long I was going to be there. As I get outside, I had crackheads taking my luggage. And I never forget, there was a college police officer. And there was a Burger King at the time by this hotel. Um, I went to him and I told him what was going on. I said, listen... Those guys just took my luggage. And he said, well, what proof do you have? Well, all my luggage, it was like the it was like the same material. So they took my bigger luggages and left me with my carry-on, right? And eventually the cops, they helped me get back my uh, luggage. But he told me, you are not in a good area. You need to leave because something bad can happen. I should have like took that as a, a warning or a strike one. But I just thought, hey, I'm not from here. I'm just going to have to make the most out of this because I paid for a week. So after a week or so, you know, I paid for another week. Eventually, I became bored and I said, you know, I got to meet somebody out here. You know, I got to like have someone show me around Atlanta. So I signed up for blackpeoplemeet.com. My best friend at the time was living in Phoenix and she said, listen, this is a really good site. You can meet a Southern gentleman because this is what Atlanta is known for or the South, the Southern charm, Southern gentleman. So I signed up for blackpeoplemeet.com and I want to say within the first hour, I had so many hits, so many hits. And I settled on this one guy and I never forget what he looked like. He had dreads. He was like light brown. He had hazel eyes. He was fine. Okay. I have never seen dudes like that. Like in Phoenix, Arizona at the time, there were no guys wearing dreads with gold in them, you know, gold teeth. It was just guys with like low cut fades and then plus, you know, the accent. So I basically was sold on his pictures and his profile was very nice. You know, he seemed like a Southern gentleman. He was a little bit older than I was. So I said, okay, this would be the guy. So we exchanged about 20 messages before we exchanged numbers. And I'm telling him like, yeah, I'm new. I'm not from here. I just touched down from Phoenix, Arizona. So the agreement was that he was going to meet me and show me around Atlanta. 
you know, take me out to eat and just show me a couple areas of, you know, where I might like. I was all for it. So when he gets to Motel 6, about 45 minutes later, he was the guy in the picture. I think he looked better in person, but, you know, he was a little thuggish. You know, he had the tattoos. I think he had a teardrop by his eye. But again, I didn't, like, judge him. I was just so happy to meet somebody that can take me around and show me around Atlanta. So we're in my room, and he's like, do you smoke? I don't smoke weed at all. So he's like, all right, well, um, have you ate? I'm like, no, I haven't really ate. But that morning, I had Burger King. So like I said, Burger King was about, it was walking distance. So I had me like a little breakfast sandwich that morning, but I was hungry. And <clears throat> I really wanted like some cooking from Atlanta. Like I wanted to go to Gladys Knight's restaurant, but... You know, he said, well, I'll take you to get something to eat. But he wanted to roll up a blunt and, you know, kind of get himself an appetite. So I allowed him to roll up his blunt and smoke his weed in my room. So while he is doing that, I decided, okay, why not I change out of my clothes and, you know, kind of get ready. Because I thought we were going on a date, per se. So I go into the bathroom and let me just kind of describe how the hotel was set up. There was an area, so when I hit the bathroom, there's like a corner, like a blind spot that I can't see. So basically the mirror is right there, there's a, a bathroom stall, but there's like a, a huge wall that I have to walk around to kind of see the like um, area of where the bed is at. So I'm in there and I'm getting myself ready, change my clothes, you know, touch up on my makeup, make sure I look nice. And as soon as I hit that corner, there was a gun to my head. Now, at this point, I am freaking out. I am like shaking. And even thinking about it now, it, it still scares me because he had, I think, was a nine millimeter to my head. And he's like, you know what time it is? You know, give me what you got. I'm going to blow your brains out. And I'm like, and his name was Antoine. I'm like, kind of you know trying to convince him like hey man why you want to rob me I don't have anything I said I am fresh from Arizona I have nothing and he's like I know you got something like nobody travels you know he's basically thinking I like he hit the jackpot right I'm living at a motel six so I don't see how I had on baby fat so it, it wasn't like I had gold and, and all kind of flashy material so I told him again I don't have anything I said please just take you can take my purse I said, I don't have anything. All I have is what I brought from Arizona. So me being a dumbass, I forgot. But at the time, I had two cell phones. I had a prepaid Boost mobile phone that had a Georgia area code because I was getting ready to move out there. Then I had my uh, regular, regular phone by Sprint. Well, and my iPod. So I put my change from paying for the room another week in the top drawer along with my iPod and my two cell phones. So while the gun is still, now he's walking away. So the gun is not at my head. It's like pointed towards me and he's walking away and he reaches the top drawer and he sees that. He took everything I got. I mean, he took my iPhone. He took my, I mean, not my iPhone. He took my iPod. He took my cell phones. And basically he was like, what else do you got? Now, I don't know why I did this, but at the time I had a laptop, a laptop. I had my laptop under the mattress, but I had the charger cord hanging out. Had he seen that, he would have known that I had a laptop somewhere in the room, but he did not. So I told him that's all I got. I said, I swear to you, that's all I got, right? So he tells me to turn around. Now at this time, I'm facing him with my hands up. I'm crying. I'm shaking. I'm saying, please don't kill me. I swear that's all I got. I won't tell anybody. He has the gun pointed towards me. He tells me to turn around and get on the ground. Now, at this point, I just knew I was going to die. And so I am pleading with him. I said, please don't kill me. I said, I will not tell the cops. I promise you. So he said, I don't want you to look back. You count to 10. So with my hands on my head like this, and I am lying down on the ground of Motel 6. In my room, I start counting to 10. And as soon as I count to 10, 
I hear him running out my door. Now, once I believed he was gone, I was like kind of shaking and freaking out. I wanted to call 911, but I'm like, damn, what am I going to tell them? I got robbed by a guy. He took my phone. So I have really no way of tracing where this guy is at. So what I did is I pulled my laptop from under the bed and I logged on to Skype. I called my best friend in Phoenix and I told her what happened. And because like I said, my room phone, my room phone was not working. So I was on call 911, but it, for some reason it wasn't working, ironically. So um, I Skype her and like I'm shaking, I'm freaking out. And she calls 911 for me. And then, you know, of course the police arrived because that College Park cop was already gone. So the police arrive, whatever, they smell weed in my room, and I tell them what happened. So they think I am a prostitute. So I had no idea that this hotel off an old National Highway was a spot for girls who worked on Craigslist and Backpage. At the time, I was green to everything. So they thought I was a prostitute, I had a date, he robbed me and took everything. And I'm telling the police officers that is not what happened. So when I try to go online to black people meet and find his profile, he already deleted everything. And like I told the officers, he took my cell phone. So I had no way of letting them know where he's at or how to get in contact with him. All I had was a description of him. And even that was all I can give. So again, they advised me like, hey, you're new. You should not be doing online dating. And they kind of lectured me. But the reason why I'm telling you guys the story is that based on that experience, I really am skeptical about online dating. I could have lost my life over nothing because I was naive. I was stupid and foolish. And I should have looked at the red flags, but I did not. All I saw was a handsome guy. And I thought he was going to show me a good time when he ended up almost taking my life. So that is my message to you guys is don't be like Deanne. If you are talking to someone online, you got to fill them out. Like I said, within the first two hours, this guy was in my room. And looking back at how everything went, it was my fault. He knew I was alone. He knew I had nobody. He knew the area. I was foreign to Atlanta. I didn't know that that part of the city was bad. So that was my fault. But that really did happen to me. And like I said, based on that, I really don't be, you know, I have online sites. I, I try to date, you know, like off of what match.com, um, eHarmony. There's a few sites that I use, but I am very skeptical. And for me, I got to know you like two months for we even like do the whole meet me at my place kind of thing based on that experience. And that is what I want you guys to understand is that these things really happen to me. You got to be aware of your uh, situations. There are girls out there who are getting robbed, who are getting raped, who are dying over meeting a man online. So I hope this story time is expired or not expiring, inspiring to someone out there because this really did happen to me. So that is the end. Let me know what you guys think. If you have any stories um, dealing with online dating from various websites, I am so curious to know because like I said, I'm on quite a few, but I'm always like trying to open myself for love. So I hope you guys take care on this Sunday evening and you guys will hear from me in a couple of days when my new wigs arrive. Okay, so stay blessed. Thank you for watching and have a great night. Bye.